China and Japan have won the high-speed rail race. With bullet trains crisscrossing the Asian supercontinent, it has made the grandfather of rail, the United Kingdom, look as slow as the original rocket. Why does the UK not have bullet trains? And what is the future of high-speed rail in the British Isles? Way back in 1804, a British engineer by the name of Richard Trelovthick built the first railway engine. But steam locomotion would not take off in a big way until 1829 when inspired engineer George Stepson built the rocket. Great Britain would then become a powerhouse of locomotion engineering and build a rail network that would be the envy of the world. But things then started to slow down. Eventually, government reforms contained back the vast network of railways and car companies came to dominate the landscape. With the inclusion of lorries and major highway systems across the island, the train was regulated to only high capacity city to city routes, leaving many rural areas out of luck. So why did innovation stop in England? Why did they no longer invest in railways? And how did Japan and others come to dominate high-speed rail travel? There are five significant reasons why the UK doesn't have bullet trains or faster rail today. The first is that there are short distances between locations. About 80% of the UK's population lives in a minimal area between Manchester, Leeds, Bristol and London. Spending a lot of money to go not very far more quickly is rather questionable. We are looking at saving under an hour for the longest routes and dramatically less time for cities already near London. Other European rivals who have high-speed rail, such as France, are already enormous countries and the benefits would be instantly realised if they could cross them faster. The second reason is that the density of the population of the United Kingdom. Because of the first reason, it's pretty hard to lay out a new network amongst these cities, because unlike in France again, there isn't a huge amount of area in the United Kingdom that is empty between these major cities. The third reason is the historic hostility to investment in rail. Successive British governments have not followed up on the potential of high-speed rail and plans have fallen to the wayside. Despite petitions and public support for faster trains, the government has been reluctant to invest in these vast projects. Our fourth reason is more interesting than you may first believe, and it's called path dependency. Essentially, Britain invented railways and pretty much filled out the country with them toot to sweet. Once the rail networks were laid out with slower rail travel, you have all the disadvantages of being an early adopter. This means countries like Japan and especially China today can lay out high-speed rail for the first time with no other existing slow rail lines to compete, something that England cannot do. And the fifth and last reason is because of economic decline. Partly because of the third reason and partly a consequence of it, Britain has always struggled to raise sufficient capital in the post-war period for large nation-building projects, especially if, like Japan's high-speed rail network, needs to be consistently subsidised for decades to come. The result is that the UK has long-distance slow rail routes that are operating at near capacity. Experts have routinely said that a new north-south railway line should be built, and the government has finally moved on to that project with the proposed HS2 railway. Britain's new high-speed railway, High Speed 2, is a game-changer for our rail network and will improve your journey, even if you don't use our trains. 
The new high-speed trains will travel between London and Birmingham on 134 miles of dedicated track. They will pass through more than 30 miles of tunnels and over 10 miles of new viaducts, quickly delivering journeys on more trains with more seats. Phase 1 has a funding envelope of £45 billion and will open between 2029 and 2033. This new high-speed rail is set to reduce the time it takes to travel from London to Birmingham by 45 minutes, down from the current time of 82 minutes. From here, the network will extend north to connect to Manchester and beyond to the twin cities of Edinburgh and Glasgow. The whole route, once connected, you can travel from Scotland to London at a time of only 220 minutes, which is a saving of only 40 minutes. Other people have argued that the government should instead be investing in more modern or futuristic technologies, such as building a Hyperloop or Maglev technology. This would bring the travel time to cross the British Isles down to under half an hour. But honestly, it took England long enough to build a single high-speed train line. I think we might be pushing our luck. The United Kingdom may have started the rail race, but without serious investment for arguably little gain, its railways will only go as fast as the steam trains of yore, leaving the future of high-speed rail to the giants of the East. Hi there, it's Nick here from Found and Explained. I have more videos like this one on my channel, so if you like it, be sure to jump on and subscribe. I'm going to be trying to create new videos once a week, so stick around and let's see what we find. Let me know what you think of today's video down in the comments, and thanks for watching.